This is Arts Council collection and we have no idea what it does. This is an exhibition done by Arts Council Collection. Let's have a look. It's really different to like other stuff that I've seen. You've had a look around, what do you think? I love it. It's so cool. Genuinely, there's so many cool things around here and they're all different. I really okay. like it. Um, I think it all ties together with like pattern because they're all different interpretations but there's quite a lot of pattern in it. What inspired you to put these pieces together to create the exhibition? This exhibition was the idea of Yinka Shonabari, so he chose all these works to make this show. I helped him to bring it all together. From working at the Arts Council Collection, I had some further ideas about which works he might want to include. So I helped him narrow down his list and I helped him bring his idea to life. So everything we chose had to have a very clear pattern. Well, it's like a life-size of a giraffe. It's just really tall, but it seems really scraggly and as like if it's on purpose. It's not sewn up properly mm. and it's got no facial expressions. It looks kind of rough. And it like fits in with the pattern theme again, but it just seems really like broken down. And it's big and it's really on a large scale compared to the rest of the pieces here. Yeah, we were wondering how you get it here. So you see it initially and you think, isn't it odd to have a giant giraffe in an art gallery? It seems out of place and that makes it a little bit funnier. But then the fact it doesn't have a face, the fact it has these seams on the outside, this kind of rough aesthetic, this rough appearance, then it does then seem a little bit sinister as well. If it moves, I will cry. <laughs> well, it is literally like giraffe size. Well, I guess this is a bit of a secret, but the giraffe's legs come off. So when the giraffe comes in here, it's his body and his head, and he wheels in here on a crate and then as we start to position the work, work out where it's going to look best, what the best angle is to see it from. We then attach the legs and then we adjust it a little bit. But it is a very, very heavy work, so you can't do too much moving around. I do think it's a strange piece to look at, but that's kind of why I like it, because of all the different things you could interpret it as. It's quite common in Laura Ford's work for her figures not to have a face. Although we can't see the expression on the giraffe's face, we're led to read its body language. Its legs are a bit uncertain, they're bending in towards each other. It's kind of reaching forward a little bit, you're not quite sure what it's reaching for. So instead of looking in the giraffe's face for some ideas, you actually look at the giraffe's body instead. Laura Ford's works are often like nightmarish childhood memories. She recalls sort of earlier feelings and then combines them into these at first pretty idyllic and then secondary a bit ghoulish. Well, what I've learned about the giraffe is that it was intentionally made not to look exactly like a lifelike giraffe just because they wanted to, like the artist herself, she wanted to bring this childhood toy-like vibe to it, like a nightmare from your childhood. She wanted to kind of bring that to life and put it in a sculpture form. I think it's a good thing that Arts Council Collection do put these kind of exhibitions together because it gives the public a different insight to all the different pieces that other artists have made and it puts them together in groups that just fit so nicely and are easy to look at.